Okay, so we've gone over so far, controlling from the back, the arm trap sequence, how to deal with his defenses to the arm trap sequence, hand fighting, and attacking from both the strong side and the weak side. So now we're going to add in a new strategy this week, which will be very useful, and that's to use the Kimura seatbelt as opposed to the traditional seatbelt. Okay, so it's pretty much the same, except it just adds in a bit more control on his arm, okay, and thus on his shoulders. Okay, so from the Kimura, I reach my bottom arm past my top arm and I can grip his wrist here. Okay? When I make the grip, it's really important. I don't use a thumb, okay? And I roll my wrist forward. The reason I don't need to use a thumb is because when I use a thumb, it's actually easier for when he starts to move his hand around, it kind of wrist locks me and it's easy for him to slip out through the hole in my grip. Okay? When I use my thumb, the hole in my grip is, is, in, is a way that's easy for him to break through. When I don't use a thumb, I can actually cup around his wrist here, and the hole in the grip is facing me. So that now when he tries to pull it, this is the direction that I have the pulling tension already, so his arm won't come out. Okay, so see here, there's no hole in the grip on this side, as opposed to here, where there is a hole. Okay, so I grip with no thumb, and I roll my wrist down toward the inside of my forearm, and I stretch my hands. Okay, when I stretch my hands, it pops my elbow up, and creates tension on his arm. So you see, if he tried to turn into me, there's a lot of tension here and it controls him quite effectively. Okay? So this is how I make the Kimura Sipo. Okay? It's really good to use from the weak side. Like, to be honest, I mostly use the Kimura grip from the weak side. When I use it from the strong side, it's just to get a bit of extra control. Okay? But from the weak side, it's very effective at I can use my elbow here to move him away, and now I still have a strong control. If something goes wrong and he starts to escape, I'll be able to retake the back easy, as we'll get to next week. Okay? So I control here. Now, the common strategy that I use with the Kimura grip, I use my foot on the hip here, move myself away, and now it's easy to trap the arm here, come back to the classic arm trap sequence. Okay? Also, when I trap the arm here, if he's able to connect his hands, or if I can't get down to trap his arm, okay, so sometimes he starts to slip out and my leg comes up on his shoulder and I can't get the proper trap. Now I'll go to the back triangle where I reach the tricep, switch, and lock the triangle here. Okay. If you want more details on the arm trap or the triangle, have a look at the previous videos and you'll get them there. Okay. Also, as I start to trap, Sometimes he frees from this leg and starts to slip out and I have to go to the crucifix again with the Kimura and I start to attack here. So you can see how they all go together quite effectively, okay? Another thing that I like to do is use the Kimura grip, okay, to start to attack his arm in the armor, okay? I prefer to keep good control, go through the hand fighting or the arm trap sequences to get to the rear naked choke, but sometimes time is running out or you just can't get to the choke, you need to go to the arm lock. Okay? So from here, I can either set up the Kimura grip already with my elbow on this side of his head, or I can make the Kimura grip and bring my elbow to the other side. But I need to use my elbow to frame away. Okay? Now, as I go to the arm bar, I stretch this leg across and I put my foot on his hip here. Okay? I don't want him to put this between his legs. I put here and I open out and pass this over. Okay, if you just turn to the center so you can see. Now, I keep the Kimura grip as long as I can because it's like, it's a safety. In case he starts to slip out, I can always retake the back, okay? Or I always have a strong control. The thing to remember with the arm lock, the most important thing is not the pinch with the knees, as a lot of people say. It's actually the bite of my heels pulling in, bringing his shoulder blades in together. And you can see even the strongest defenses with the rear naked choke type defenses. When I pull my heels right into my hips, my opponent is bunched up and it's very easy to strip his grip and finish from there. Okay, let's go down this one. Yeah. So when I end up with the armbar from the more grip here, if my opponent doesn't grab his hands together, I'll just attach it to me, lean back, create tension in the arm and then reach through his elbow. Okay. If he clasps his arms together, I'm going to cross my feet, 
the leg that's by his head will be crossed on the bottom, so I have more pressure. Now my knees open out to pin him, and my heels pinch in. Okay? He won't be able to move around much here. Okay? The most common grip break that I do, where I thread this through, control my hip, and now I just monitor his legs with the other end. Okay? Now what I need to do is just create tension in his arm. He'll still hold on, just keep a lot of tension here, keep my feet pulling in, and now when I'm ready, I'm just gonna hit his elbow to break his grip, hold his wrist, sit back. And now bridge up through the elbow. Okay? So hopefully you can use all those tips and it'll help your it'll help add a new dimension and a new option to your back attacks. Okay? If you can't get the traditional hand fighting going, if you can't get the iron trap sequence going, make the more grip and see if you can make something happen. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed practicing this in the specific training this week and any other questions, let me know.